Hello, welcome back to Madison Rains. Once forgot about <laughs> YouTube channel. Long lost YouTube channel. We wanted to uh, uh, create more content, obviously, on, on Madison's YouTube channel and uh, had this idea to start interviewing and talking to to you stop interrupting to uh local business owners restaurant owners just things that uh interest us and in and in, in today this morning we're sitting outside of the wizard of za it's a uh kind of like an instagram famous pizza place right it's a super secret instagram famous um mind-blowing pizza concept and we've traveled all over the world um not necessarily eating pizza, but we've had a lot of pizza in a lot of different places. And Wizard of Za, in my opinion, is hands down the best pizza I've ever had. So from Chicago style to New York style to Detroit everything in between, Detroit style, um, pizza in California, all over, uh, we have found the place here in Columbus that might be the best, the Wizard of Za. So we're gonna go inside. We're gonna talk to Spencer, the owner, and we're gonna get the lowdown on everything that is the Wizard of Za. But you can't know exactly where we are. It's super secret. Well, we're in Columbus. We're in Columbus, but that's why I said exactly where we are. Oh. Relative versus absolute location. Right. Okay. Uh, we're here with Spencer Saylor. Spencer, the owner, executive chef, Wizard of Za. Start us from the beginning. How did all of this start <laughs> so, for you? I mean, Yeah, I am the owner of the Wizard of Za. We're an underground pizza restaurant. Uh, we started kind of right at the beginning of COVID. Uh, I was uh, furloughed from my job in the catering industry. Obviously, uh, that industry kind of came to a halt. There weren't any events taking place uh, throughout COVID. And so I was kind of back to square one. How do I make money? How am I going to survive this? What's going to happen? Nobody knew at that time what was really going to happen if we'd have support from the government. And so obviously that stuff came along. but. Uh, what I found was that I finally had time to sit down and figure out my dream, which was to always own a restaurant. But previously, I had never really had the time to sit down and really figure out how to get there. You know, when we're working our normal nine to five job, whatever it is, we get caught up in everything that we're doing for that, that we don't have time to sit down and focus on our personal professional goals. Right. And so I had that opportunity and uh, really did not anticipate it to happen like it did or go off like it did. Uh, just really started making some pizzas for some family and friends. Next thing I knew, they loved them and they're telling their family and friends. And before I know it, I've got a whole group of people wanting to try it. And so that just grew and grew and grew and grew uh, to the point to where we were opening up this shop where we're sitting now, uh, roughly six months later with 4,500 people all lined up, ready to uh, get our pizza. So it's uh, it's been a whirlwind. I, I can't believe that it's all happened like it has, but uh, here we are now. <laughs> but um, it's amazing that you, you talk about the beginning of COVID, right, and how we were in Atlanta flying home and found out about everything that was happening, but you decided to start a business. Like, yeah. that's not what a lot of people decided to do, and, and you decided to, to go the other way and start something. How nervous was that how many sleepless nights did you have as you thought about <laughs> going down this path quite a few i mean they were good sleepless nights it's like now i have sleepless nights because i'm stressed for the business sure. back then i was having sleepless nights because my mind was in a million places of oh i could do this oh i could do that and not really knowing where i was going to see this through um, but luckily i you know i was raised by a single mom who worked three jobs and so i just am instilled with that um, kind of drive that when you're knocked down, you're responsible for getting to where you need to be, where you want to be, to make sure that you're safe financially, that you're doing what you want to be doing. And so, you know, I could have laid around, you know, taken the, the assistance that, um, you know, the country was giving folks. And unfortunately, many folks couldn't do anything about it because what they do for a living just wasn't happening through the mm -hmm. pandemic. But for me in the food industry, you know, people still need to eat. And so uh, for me, that's what I love to do. I love to feed people. That's what I'm passionate about. And so I couldn't just sit around and not do that. And so decided to start a business and here we are now. Luckily, I've, I've been blessed to be one of the, the positive stories out of uh, coronavirus and I'm so lucky. 
I have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm blown away by this whole concept. And you mentioned um, this whole thing kind of grew because of word of mouth. And that's like the biggest marketing tool, right? Is yeah. positive reviews and word of mouth and friends sharing with friends. And, and that's kind of how I found all of this and, and found out about you. One of my questions though, um, and, and it kind of goes along with, with the story that you're telling, everybody needs to eat. However, um, and, and maybe I'm, I'm wrong in my thought on this, here in Central Ohio, the pizza industry specifically, could, it could be argued that it's oversaturated. Um, you know, we get on DoorDash on any given Friday night because we want to order pizza and there are so many options, yeah. like my, my head explodes. <laughs> Was that, did you think about that? Was that something that crossed your mind or did you just believe so much in what you were doing and have such a passion for it that you didn't care? I think a little bit of both. I think um, for me, I knew it was a good product and so I wasn't necessarily concerned about people not liking it. And then I think as far as kind of the oversaturation goes, you know, our style of pizza is totally different from what you're gonna find in Central yeah. Ohio. And so I was finding that there was a need for that within that that you know cut of the food industry mm -hmm. within pizza people wanted sicilian style they wanted something a little bit thicker and no one here was really doing it you know you've got some De detroit style places you can get deep dish chicago style a couple yeah. places but no one was really doing that true sicilian style which is what i grew up on so it was kind of a combination of both feeling really good about what i was doing and the product i was putting out and also just knowing that there was a need for it and that folks wanted it. Um, and that goes back to, like you said, you know, going with a word of mouth concept is scary, you know, right. because it could totally blow up. It could totally do nothing. It could take three months for it to get across the city or it could take three years. Right. Um, but you've got to be uh, confident in your product. And I felt that I had that. And so. I did not think it was going to explode as quickly <laughs> as it did, but I knew that uh, folks were going to enjoy it and uh, the word was going to be spread. So let's talk about the pizza for a second because we love pizza in general, yeah. and, and your pizza is, is absolutely amazing. Um, I have become a uh, hot honey super fan <laughs> uh, of all things, especially Mike's. Uh, yeah. hot, I saw the sign when I came in. Um, so if we just talk about the pizza just for a, a, a little bit here, how did you come up with your recipe? Uh, the Sicilian style, I love. Yeah. I lived in New Jersey for 13 years, so I, I love that style of pizza. And what made you think, okay, this is what I need to do? Was it just because it wasn't being done or because, like you said, this is what you grew up on? It was mainly what I grew up on. So if you talk to anybody from the Youngstown, Northeast Ohio area that lived down here in Ohio, they're all 98% of the time going to say that the pizza is just not up to par here. And uh, it's not that the pizza isn't good. I, I enjoy pizza from a lot of places in town, but it's not that taste of home. Right. And I think we all want to be able to taste what is reminiscent for us and what is nostalgic and what we grew up on. And so after living here for 10 years, it just became a thing of it's like, I can keep complaining about it and wishing I was home having it, or I could just bring it here. And so a lot of it was really um, it's what I grew up on. And, you know, the recipes are all kind of my own, but also all come from what, again, I grew up on. I can remember my dad making pizza dough for my little sister and I and us popping pizzas as kids and, and all of that, you know, those nostalgic memories. And so uh, that's why I kind of think, you know, the pizza and, and you guys enjoy it, you love it. And I think why it stands out is you can taste that passion and that love in the pizza because this goes beyond for me just making pizza it goes beyond just making a style that wasn't found in the area because there's money to be made now for me it's i want to not only feed people but i want to introduce them to what i grew up on and what means so much to me and my family and it's been a blessing to be able to do that mm -hmm.